Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I wanted to bring you a video and this is going to be how to get more credit card approvals, top 10 secrets. Now, um, if you are new to my channel, I ask you to like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you are not new to my channel, I am going to bring you more information on how to build credit. So this is going to be information and top 10 secrets so you can get more approval. Now, um, if you're familiar with my channel, I tell you how to, uh, with coaching, credit coaching, how to you know, uh, basically deal with credit issues. So for those who've been following my information, this is going to be new that I'm going to bring a lot more information on how to build credit because it's an essential part of also developing a healthy, solid credit profile and credit score. One thing that I will say to people, you know, um, some people are used to dealing and working with constantly with credit repair companies and only dealing with um, how to remove negative items. But your problems should have an expiration date. You know, trouble don't last always. And if it is lasting, you need to look at the strategies you're employing. So I talk a lot about wealth and wealth building and also investing. If you know me and follow me on, my, um, on Facebook, I'm a real estate investor. Also, if you are interested in joining my credit group on Facebook, it's, um, you can feel free. The links will be here in the description for you if you like to join that group and it is absolutely free. The information in that group have helped many go from a 650 credit score to a 800 credit score. Some people were in the lower 518s and within four months, they're at 680 and it is totally possible by employing these strategies. So let's jump into the information, how to get more credit card approvals and we have 10 secrets in order to do so so one of the secrets is searching the credit card lender application uh, rules and requirements now this is something that most people do not do because they are not being strategic about their credit so when you are looking for a credit card to apply to, you should apply for cards that's looking for your credit profile. If you do not know this, banks need customers because banks primarily make their money off of interest. So banks have lending products that they need to market to people. And I'll go into that deeper where uh, people don't understand the relationship with the credit bureaus and the banks. The credit bureaus are data collectors. They are not government agencies. They collect data and sell your information and your profiles to banks. So you need to learn how to use this to your advantage. And what you need to do is position yourself and your credit profile and try to work with lenders who have products that will tailor to your current credit profile state. Now, for example, why you should do the research, take Chase. We know Chase is a top tier card. If you don't know, you'll get that information Credit cards do run in tiers. There's five tiers of credit cards and Chase is one of the top tier credit card companies. And even in that company, they have different credit cards tailored to a more premium card. But Chase have a hardcore 524 rule. 
524 rule, it means no more than five new credit card accounts in 24 months. That's in a two year time frame. So that means if you have more than five new accounts within 24 months, no matter how high your credit score is, you will be denied by Chase, point blank period. So if that is you, you need not to be applying at Chase. I don't care how good your credit score is. Another Number two, another example, Discover Card, you can only have one credit card in the first year. And uh, Discover only allow you to have two credit card as a limit. So if you are a person that have a Discover card and it's less than a year and you want to apply again, you cannot do so. You, If you do, you will automatically be denied. So there are some card companies like a Navy Fed who got, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, they got a, a three, well, 391 day rule. Basically with Navy Fed, you have to wait 91 days from the statement and if you apply for a credit card, received it, you have to wait at least 91 days later in order for you to apply for another credit card. So with companies like that, you may get more than one credit card within a year. But with Discover, that is not going to work. You have to wait a year. Also, you need not to be applying if you are a person who have a subprime credit profile full of uh, First Premier Bank, you know, um, it's another one, maybe Credit One Bank, things like that. Now, I know Credit One Bank have a co-branded American Express card, but remember, that is the processing system or network that they use. That is not an American Express uh, just wholly a uh, uh, credit card, like having a direct relationship with American Express, it is a difference. So with American Express, they are looking for more stringent requirements far as your credit score and also what is reporting on your credit profile. So there are some things that um, American Express will deny you for and if you're not at a certain credit score already or if you have certain negative items it is less likely that you're going to get approved for an american express gold card and things in that nature so you want to make sure that you do your research and you're not putting in an application for a credit card that you don't feel that you will totally and absolutely be approved for. It should not be um, you guessing when you're pulling the trigger to apply for a credit card. Number two, researching what credit bureau each credit card company pull from for approvals. If you do not know, a lot of credit card companies only pull exclusively from certain credit bureaus. So most banks and you uh, lenders use only one credit bureau for approval. These banks and lenders may use different credit bureaus depending on region and location. So if you're in the Northeast, you might have a company, I'm going to use Navy Fed. Navy Fed may in the North, Northeast, if you are stationed there, pull for from TransUnion. Then if you're in the South, they may pull or other regions from Equifax. So you want to be aware and try to research that out because point number three, you should try to apply for credit card lenders that's pulling from your strongest credit score. If you know that your lowest score because your credit profiles with the big three might vary for the information that's reporting on there. You might have some negative information that's on your TransUnion that is not on your Experian. And I will give you a key that Experian, I find you want to develop that score um, because a lot of lenders, because Experian update their credit score often will pull from Experian. 
I'm going to say in my experience, the second one will be TransUnion. And then the third will be Equifax. And mostly with Equifax that I see, it's going to be most credit unions will use Equifax. So you want to know who that lender is pulling from. Also, you may want to know what scoring model are they using from that credit bureau. Let's take, for example, a Navy Fed. They are going to use a FICO 9, which is very important that most lenders use a FICO 8. The reason why that's important because FICO 9 does not factor in collections from medical collections into the credit score. So that is very important for you to know those kind of details. So you need to know what the lender is, number one, what credit bureau they're looking for, from pulling from for their approval in your region, in your location. And if you can find out what scoring model they're using, look into that then you could kind of pinpoint whether you're going to be approved for this or not and look at their scoring requirements for the card that you are applying for. Also, opting into pre-screen websites. I have a video on this if you need this information and I go into depth why you should opt in. Factor Trust, opt in prescreen.com. These companies will help banks to match your credit profile to their, pre their available products. Understand, there are some banks that love to deal in the subprime realm. That is their specialization. Don't think because you have bad or troubled credit that nobody is looking for you. It's actually the banks will pay the credit bureaus more money for subprime information. This is why they like to keep negative items on your credit report because the banks pay more for subprime credit profiles because they can charge you for more interest and justify it. Somebody with a better credit score, they cannot justify that and they have other lenders competing for their um, business, but the credit bureaus make money by collecting data. This is why they don't want to remove negative items off your credit report because they can sell your information for a lot more. Another thing, 87% of credit profiles have an error. They have never found that pendulum swinging in the other direction, that by accident, they make somebody credit score better than what it is, or put information that makes their credit score much better, because that is not to their advantage. Remember, the credit bureaus are multi-billion dollar companies that makes money off of keeping negative information on your credit report. So, Always try to use this to your advantage by opting into these websites because this will cause pre-approval letters to come to you. And what happens is these banks will spend less money. It saves them less money by buying from these other venues to already have you in their credit profile. So sometimes you gotta learn how to use the matrix to work into your best advantage. And we're gonna to go to the next slide. Another key component, look for credit card companies with soft pull approvals. This is important because what you wanna do, you can go to websites like Capital One. You could put your information in there and they will tell you what cards you approve for in their credit card line. Banks make money primarily on interest, so they need customers to make money and fit the 
profile for their products. So they have a subprime card that they're looking for people in the subprime category, like Capital One, but then they also have the Capital Venture card. They have other top of the line cards and in between cards. So, you know, they have a line of different tier of credit cards. So they want to find customers and people to give credit card products too because that's how they make their money many now have pre-approval and i mentioned that pre-screening on their website so you want to research those pre-approval soft pull companies now pre-approvals does not mean it's guaranteed but it will pre-qualify you for uh, which credit card product that fits your profile so like i'm using like a capital one they have a whole line of different credit cards that cater to different uh, people with different credit profiles, different credit scores, different credit history. So you don't want to be pulling the trigger on a product that you do not qualify for. And so the pre-screening and the pre-approval will help you know where you should be applying. And this soft pull is not damaging your credit score. Next, credit card gardening. Now, if you're not a, uh, an advanced person that dealt with credit cards, um, this is a whole strategy, and I'm going to do a video about credit card gardening in itself. But I'm going to hit some highlights on what credit card gardening is. So, trying to open a credit card, you want to try trying to open credit card accounts within days apart and then let them age. So the key here with credit card gardening is you want to start building data points, okay? So it'll help you build data points. Understand that credit worthiness is based off of your behavior. So the more that the banks, the more data that the banks have on you, the more it builds your credit worthiness. They want to see what your habits is. So opening two credit card accounts at the same time and then try to let them age together will help you to build more credit history, have two credit lines that you're paying on um, at the same time. And another key with this is by letting your credit score rest and not applying for something else. A lot of people like to pull these accounts at one time because you might have a credit card company where you're really aiming for a chase, like I mentioned earlier, and you don't wanna go over the limit by having too many new accounts. And having too many new accounts, credit card accounts can get you denied for credit. Also, Credit card gardening help you maintain your age of credit, which is the third largest credit score factor. So if you did not know, anytime that you add a new account to your or a credit card account, it decreases your age of credit because they take an overall, a overall average of all your credit accounts and age. So anytime you add on two or a new a credit card account, you'll find that your age of credit shortened. Now, this is where I do offer credit analyzation and credit coaching to help people to via Zoom look at their credit profile because different people need different things depending on their credit profile. Not one size fit all. So we can really look at your profile and see what you need. So if you have a, a young person who don't have a lot of age of credit, you might not want to um, pile on a lot of new accounts. You might want to be a little more strategic because shortening their age of credit and a person only have one year of credit history, it can um, decrease their credit score. To believe it or not, it can it can decrease their credit score. So you want to make sure that you know this principle and you try to practice this if you're trying to build your credit 
to be aware. So I'm dropping a lot of gems for you. This is a lot of stuff I I um when I sit down and do coaching with people via Zoom is looking at these details. So this is more or less getting to the strategic part of um, building credit and dealing with credit principles. Now, removing fraud alerts and uh, freezes off your credit profile. This is very important. And hopefully you're rocking with me continuously on this video because we're gonna add more important factors in the end as we're go or as we're going now this is a big one because it doesn't matter how uh how good your credit score is credit alerts and notes on your credit files can get you denied for credit if you got a, a fraud alert or uh, on your credit what would happen is that lender like I said, this, see, when you're getting approved, this is not physical people looking at your credit report, if I didn't mention it. You're being approved by an algorithm. So when you have a fraud alert and that system see that the fraud alert is on there, they might just automatically deny you because it looked like you've been a victim of identity theft. And so they don't know if it's you applying for it or someone else. So sometimes these lenders just deny you altogether just because of the fraud alert. Now, moving forward, even talking about credit profile freezes on SageStream, LexisNexis can cause you not to be ver verified by the banks and the lenders and can get you denied. This is one that really people go overboard and, um, some people just take one principle and fall in a ditch because, like I said, you know, your trouble should have an expiration date. There's some people that, oh, I'm freezing my sage stream. I don't want to put this information. You got to learn how to use the matrix when it's time to. A lot of these people that call themselves that they do credit and credit repair, they don't know what they're talking about. I had people make comments or why would you tell people to opt in? Because you you really don't have experience and I can see the way you're talking because what? you only talking about freezing a credit profile only to dispute stuff off? Some people don't have bad credit history at all. There are some of us that never had the struggle story, okay? Like, so some people who only struggled all their life, all they know is freezing things. They don't understand that you need to learn how to unfreeze these assets so you can get lines of credit. And the reason why I know where you're at, because apparently for you to ever do something positive in life, you have to have credit to you to get real estate, to get a home, to get bank loans, to operate a business, you need credit and business credit cards and you need your personal credit profile. A lot of times, don't let people fool you. But a lot of people only been on the outskirts, the outliers of life, outliers of life. They never own real estate. So they don't understand how you need to learn how to use credit. Being it credit cards, you can learn how to invest by dealing with credit cards. They never got to the premium credit cards, zero interest, things that have balance transfer, actual large credit lines, but a, a past, you know, $1,500 that got into the 20,000, 30,000 worth of lines of credit because they don't understand this stuff. There's times where you need to participate with the system. There are times like Neo, you got to plug into the matrix, but you got to know what information and what data to feed the matrix the way you want to. Then you could be a Neo. Then you know how to dug build it in the system. So a lot of people don't have a lot of experience on that because all they want to do is dispute negative items. But this is one of the things you got to, once you've done 
cleaning your credit profile. If you want to get credit, you got to unfreeze that Sage Stream. You got to unfreeze that Lexus Nexus. So I know I'm dropping gems here. And like I said, I offer um, credit coaching. And this is part of the benefit. Like, you know, it's like being a coach. Everything ain't the Houston Rockets and you throwing up threes all the time. You know what I'm saying? You do understand defense when the game, right? So a lot of people, they'll, they'll you, you can hear, and what I'm giving y'all is gems that you can hear and, and giving you knowledge. So you know who really is for you and who is really marking and off you. Because a, you're not going to ever have a strong credit profile because it's a difference between a manufactured score, how these people tell you, oh, get you a CPN and throw some, cre some, some credit lines on it. LexisNexis is there for that, to stop all that foolishness. Because you just not going to uh, appear out the blue being 34 years old. And now here you got credit history six months ago. This is how you got to understand how to move in the matrix. You know, the, you don't understand how to move in the matrix. And then you have people talking about, oh, with the fraud alerts. Oh, always doing credit sweeps. This is how a lot of times the fraud alerts get on there. You're saying account's not yours, and then you get hit with a fraud alert. And these folks that's offering y'all these credit sweeps, a lot of people are decreasing on their credit score because they don't understand that these sweeps, number one, remove accounts. You don't always throw the baby away with the bath water. Some people, they have one missed payment, two missed payments, and they sweep all their history away by claiming fraud. They sweep all their history away, and then their credit score decreased way lower because they removed all their accounts, and their account history, age of credit, play a part. And then with these fraud alerts and because that happened your credit profile don't match it match your age you can't be 40 years old with an 18 year old credit profile see this is what they don't tell you they keep playing games with you and then what they'll do is when you come into light with this and you don't understand what happened and why you being denied for credit and it looked like you got a 700 credit score look like you got a 730 credit score they done slapped the fraud alert and you can't get none of that, no credit. And these are real blockers why you can't. So I'm giving you the underbelly of what the secrets is to get in more credit card approvals. Let's go to the next one. The next one that will get you denied for credit is if you don't control your utilization and your debt on your current credit cards. This one right here we're building to some of the top ones this gonna get you jacked up and denied with the quickness if you have high credit card utilization you could get the denied no matter how good your payment history is because it makes it look like you're financially strapped so you have to before you start applying for credit you got to control that utilization too much debt and not enough income you can uh use on your credit uh application can get you denied so if you got a lot of debt that's reporting on your credit profile but when on that application you are not showing enough monthly income that can get you denied you don't make enough money to pay the bills that you have so you need to know that that can get you denied your income will get you denied i always tell people income matters it's just not credit score alone this is what i'm talking about the deeper things in life a lot of people think i get a credit score of 850 and i can just get approved for anything that is so ridiculous that's you think if i can make I make 20 grand a year. I can go out and get a mortgage on a million dollar home. That just don't add up. So there comes where your income matters. And this is why I'm trying to get a lot of people to focus to get your credit right. So not that you just work in. A lot of people messing their credit up. 
jacking up their utilization because they don't have streams of income. So I'm trying to give you information where you can leverage your credit to start making other streams of revenue. Also, maxed out credit cards will surely get you denied. They're not, I don't care if all the rest of them are clear. And I see people do this all the time, my clients. What is notorious for having a maxed out credit card is small credit lines, very small 300, 500 baby credit lines. And um, in my coaching, I find, I, I show you techniques, my credit analyzation, show you techniques, how you get out of that cycle of baby credit lines and how you can get larger lines. I might do a video on that. But also, you want to make sure if you, before you apply for credit, you know, you keep your utilization between 1% to 10%. Now, a lot of people problem with their credit, they want this to be a sprint and not a marathon. A lot of time, why people get jacked up because they're very impulsive. Most people I counsel with their credit, a lot of problems they have, they're very impulsive. They got to have it now. So if your credit card is already out of control, your utilization, they just want to go and apply now because this is what got their credit cards jacked up and, and maxed out because there's not a lot of self-discipline. There's not a lot of self-control. Number one rule to control your utilization is if you don't got three times the money in the bank, to pay for that, you shouldn't charge it. Point blank, period. Three times. Your credit card is not supposed to be used for things that you don't have the money to pay. And this is the problem with people. They don't understand that, that your credit score is about good habits. And most people with bad credit it's because they got bad habits and that's why your credit is bad. So credit worthiness and everything about the credit score and the factors is an algorithm to detect a certain behavior. And if your behavior always show your cars maxed out, your utilization is always riding at 80%, 70%. FICA 10T and FICA 10T, FICA 10 and FICA 10 T is tracking that. And if you want to know more about that, or if that's a new concept, if you haven't heard about FICA 10 T and FICA 10, the new scoring models, I have a video on that. So feel free to search through my channel on that information. Next thing, it might seem obvious, but trust me, uh, <laughs> as they have a saying, uh, sense is not common. So late payments, collections and charge-offs. This will get you denied. And now, this may not get you denied all the times, but let's put this in perspective. It depends on the tier of cards you're going for. If you got, now, collections for a American Express is most likely going to get you denied. Now, collections for a Premier credit card might not get you denied. Bank one credit card might not get you denied. These are subprime cards, but let's put even there with these subprime cards, there's still rules to the game. So number one, what can defeat you is recent late payments within the last 12 months. One thing about late payments, you guys, um, the system understand that people are gonna have late payments in a seven year time frame, And I see a lot of people that's so crazy over late payments, but generally any late payment over 24 months, which is two years, don't even factor into the, um, in, your, in your credit score. So late payments, you wanna really be concerned about is recent late payments. So anything over 12 months, as you would notice, the first 30 day, the first 90 days, if you make a late payment, your credit score is going to take a dive, about good 50 points. But after that four-month period, you'll start to see your score creep up 
So the key here is to make sure past that six month mark and especially that year mark, you start getting where most lenders will give you a grace period. Now there are, you know, prime credit cards to, you know, uh, top tier credit cards that they ain't gonna let you get away with that. They might need two years, you know, so all of that, you have to make sure you do research to find out. Collections, especially recently posted collections can get you denied. Now, like I mentioned earlier, uh, certain credit card companies or certain lenders like Navy Fed, if it is a medical collection with a lot of times with credit unions, medical connection uh, collections, they won't count as a negative in your credit score. They'll be using FICA 9, but if it's a consumer collection, that will hurt you. So you want to understand that lender terms and also how recent these collections, even with a subprime, if you that collection posted last month, you are better off before you apply for anything to deal with your collections. Um, I will have in the, district, uh, in the uh, description, as I always tell you guys, I have tons of contents on how collections, third-party collections are borderline illegal and how you can get those removed. And so um, number one is you send in a debt validation letter. You know my rule, if you've been following my information, I don't pay collections. I don't do pay for deletions because as if y'all don't know, when you pay that, it's going to update as a paid negative item. And the longer that collection sit, so say if it's been sitting for six years, by the next year, it's going to fall off. And the longer it sit, the way FICO run, the less it affects your credit score, the more it age. But when a person then pay that because they like, oh, I'm going to pay this, pay that, now it's uh, updated negative item and boom, you're going to see your score drop. And guess what? You started the clock because you're going to change the date of last activity. And now that bad boy can report for another seven years. But most people don't understand that. So you're better off by sending a debt validation letter. And that is your right under the federal law to make them validate that debt. Too many charge off accounts. Now, age or no age, too many charge offs can get you denied. Now, you know, so you want to dispute that off. If people are following my information, you know, I have the letter package for the collections and the charge offs. And if you want more information on how to remove charge offs, I have videos on that and why I use affidavits with the credit bureaus. And um, one of my one of my videos is why your credit disputes are not working you know, so to the credit bureaus. But y'all do know, if you don't know, collections, I am very hardcore, you do not send any letters to the credit bureaus for collections initially. You will send the debt validation directly to the credit bureaus. But with charge-offs accounts, those on my rules, you dispute with the bureaus but not with the collections. So watch my content to get more information why you need to employ that strategy. Now, call the credit card company before you apply and ask them about their approval requirements on your negative items. So if you know you had a late payment within the last, let's say, um, year, and it's about eight months old, you might call Discover and they might tell you, you know what, before the pandemic, we were approving anything long as you only have a late payments in six months, but now we changed our standards and we want to see a year. They will tell you that, or you can call and ask. So a lot with this pandemic, don't think even searching online that a lot of that stuff stand. You got to look at the dates. You can look at forums because somebody might have some information, just like with my credit uh, community that we call it on Facebook, we're sharing information. Somebody might apply for a credit card, something might happen, and you're getting real-time information by other people experience than working on the credit. 
So you want to pay attention to that. Don't try to go off of old information. Another key factor is this is why I tell you guys, if you follow me, to monitor your credit. I, I usually deal with um, Experian. You know, I, I'm finding I like Experian. My FICO is, you know, is okay, but I really like Experian. I will, even with the Experian, use the Credit Karma. We all know Credit Karma is not accurate. It's a Vantage score where Experian is a FICO score. It is a difference. But with Experian, you pull in the other two credit reports, that information for TransUnion and Equifax don't update on a Costa situation. But if you have a Credit Karma account, you can see if any information is added on and changed a lot of time, real time. Now you'll have other people that say different things about what they want to use for their credit monitoring system, but you need to have credit monitoring if you are trying to get approved for credit cards. You need to know where your score is. You should not be shooting in the dark with what's on your credit report you don't know and applying for credit cards. That is not credit strategy. You should know exactly where your credit score is before you apply. It should not be a mystery to you. So this is one of your secrets on how to get approved for credit. You got to be on top of your credit on a consistent basis and you just going to have to invest money in credit monitoring. And I'm talking about real FICO scores, not just Credit Karma for free, because we all know your Credit Karma score can be actually 100 points less. I've seen somebody 150 points less, and they went to apply for a car and got denied and found out real quick that that score was not accurate. So we'll continue on to the next. Okay, this is a big one, controlling your hard inquiries. This one right here, I had a client, credit score, Gleaming, 740, had a number of inquiries and could not get credit. So too many hard inquiries can get you denied. Why? Let's go into it. Too many hard inquiries would get you denied for credit cards, no matter how high your credit score is. It looked like banks and lenders are denying you for credit. You also look like you're in a financial hardship. If you don't know, banks don't like to lend you money when you need it. Go figure. They don't want to give you no money when you actually need it. So this is why you need to control the matrix. This is why you need to be Neo ducking these bu bullets going to the Oracle. Because guess what? You need to tell the system and fit in the algorithm where you don't look desperate. And there's so many ways that you can do this, but if you don't know these factors, that you should not have more than four hard inquiry pulls within a year. So that's maximum. Five is pushing it. And the reason why I would say five, because you'll see some people that already have a number of trade lines or credit cards, and they will, um, your credit company with your current trade line will periodically pull that credit score. And one thing, if you're a person that's already with developed credit and you have a strong profile, you know, even with gardening, you need to at least have, at bare minimum, six credit card accounts open, revolving accounts. So your credit profile does not look thin. You don't look weak, a thin credit profile. So they want to see data, how you manage credit and what your pattern is. Now, one thing with the hard inquiries, if you have six credit card lines, these companies can pull and car cause more hard inquiry pulls just because you have these accounts open. And if you didn't try to dispute that off, you might get your whole account shut down because then they're going to see that it was open or they're gonna assume it's open by fraud. And they might even slap a fraud alert that later on you have to uh, have removed. So you want to be careful and control your 
hard inquiries. One thing I see a lot with my clients that they'll go looking for a car and auto dealerships are notorious for doing a blast <laughs> and just pulling all kinds, just pulling, 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 pulling all kinds of um, lenders for your credit and you don't even know it. And a lot of people are coming to me and got like 16 hard inquiries and those hard inquiries, even 10 hard inquiries are costing you three to seven points. So you might be losing 30 points to 70 points just because your inquiries. So there's many cases if you are have a large number of inquiries and this happened to you and a lot of times with the these order dealerships what would happen is they'll keep your information and keep pulling your credit profile. And the reason why you know you'll get oh this is let's say uh uh ABC Honda you're pre-approved. Here's a letter. Come down for uh, 25000 for a vehicle, a lot of times they're pulling your credit without you knowing and they're doing hard pulls. So you got to make sure that you monitor your credit and making sure these companies are not periodically pulling your credit score. So I have had clients that I was able to remove um, many of my clients' hard inquiries within 24 hours. So if you need help with that, you might want to um, book, uh, you know, the credit analyzation with me and all those links and even for my letters will be in my description if you need to contact me. And the next one is golden. Uh, a lot of people don't know that calling the reconsideration department, some people don't even know the reconsideration department exists, but the credit card approvals are based on a computer algorithm. All of this is algorithms, you guys. So you need to know that. So what would happen for the things I, that we mentioned earlier, you could have a simple fraud alert. And, the, and when you pull, the system will deny you. You can have your LexisNexis frozen your sage stream frozen and you'll automatically get a denial. They can't verify you. So calling the reconsideration department, you could just simply do an internet search for the credit card company reconsideration number or line. You can call them, call and speak to a person in the reconsideration department who can review your application and can sometimes approve it right there on the spot because some things that might be on there, like a fraud alert, or you got your Lexus Nexus freeze, your Sage screen, could automatically just put you in a denial because it's all a computer algorithm. So talking to that person, they can manually the review your profile or your your application, and they may approve it. Now, one thing, if they still don't approve it, they can tell you what uh what you was denied for and you you can go and fix the issue and you might need to get some proof but they might tell you like 30 days or 60 days if you can produce this proof we won't even do another hard inquiry pull so this could save you and this can actually save your credit um by not having a ton of in hard inquiry pulls or you're not wasting a hard inquiry pull through that denial so make sure if you get denied you call the reconsideration department you try to speak to an actual person that can manually review your application so if you found this information helpful or um, please give me a thumbs up for the content please subscribe if you want more um, videos and to get the bell notification do so if you need more information on how to deal with your credit problems or other uh, content, feel free to watch my other videos and um, leave comments and let me know how you felt about the information. And if you have any questions, you can leave a comment and I will reply. So I hope this information was helpful you guys. If you need my help, feel free to set up a time through my links for um, if you're interested in via Zoom, if you got 
a number of inquiries and you feel like that's what's getting you denied and you came into the light of the information, reach out to me and I can give you help and I'll see you guys on the next video. Oh, oh, and by the way, I do have actually um, have rolled out ways that you can find lending and guaranteed approval, credit card approval, if you even got denied, guaranteed card approval, even if you got denied. So if you want to get that, I have that in, descri in the description. Also, if you're trying to build credit and I have courses, how to increase your credit score within 45 days. So I have a lot of good information under the links. So check that out, you guys. And also my books, I have a number of books. I just been putting in this work since 2015. And um, like I said, I have a lot of content on here that's absolutely free. And if you cannot afford to pay for stuff, it costs you nothing to pay attention. So get a pen and a pad and I got pretty free content. All right, you guys be blessed.